if uh, you may be expecting Sylvester Stallone, you're going to be mistaken. But yet everybody in my neighborhood called me Rocky. Because that's what he called me. I was born Simon. And he came to me one day and he said, Simon, you were. Peter, you are. And the word Petros means the rock. So I guess if I'm not uh, Stallone, I'm that other Hollywood movie star that goes by the name The Rock. Yeah, Rock Head is probably more like it. I should have been there when he died. I promised him that I would. If everyone forsakes you, I will never leave you. Yeah, tough talk. But anybody can talk the talk. A little tough when you have to walk the walk. And so instead of me being there for him, he laid down his life for me. He's the one who remained faithful to his promises. Yeah, they called me the rock, but I turned to sand. But you know, I gotta wonder, why did he pick me? Was it because I was so outspoken? Perhaps. Rumor has it that, uh, check the tabloids and social media, my former colleague Judas went around telling you that the only time I opened my mouth was to change feet. <laughs> well, there's some truth to that. I remember the time we were out on the lake, which is known for sudden bad storms, and we were terrified. And in the middle of the night, here he comes walking across the water. And I said, is that you? What a stupid question. Is that you? Like, who else would it be? <laughs> and he says, well, come and see. So, I got out of the boat and started walking to him. Tough guy me, you know? I'm gonna walk to Jesus. Uh, till I saw the waves. Till I felt the wind blowing spray up in my face. And I got scared. I panicked. And the moment I took my eyes off him, began to sink. Save me, Lord, I'm perishing! I cried out. Now, you've done that. You've been in tough times, and Jesus was right there in front of you saying, come to me. But you took your eyes off him and began to sink. I remember another time when Jesus was asking what social media had to say about him. <laughs> and you know the disciples, they, they love reading those tabloids and get, they all have their Instagram accounts, you know, and at John. And, <laughs> we think that maybe a John the Baptist or uh, Elijah or one of the other prophets come back. And then he asked a really tough question. Who do you say that I am? Once again, that question was meant for you, too. Who do you say that Jesus is? A nice teacher? An impressive miracle worker? I knew. I had the answer. You are the Messiah, the Christ of God. And he looks at me and says, survey says, number one answer. You got it right. But flesh and blood hasn't revealed that to you, Simon. Only my father could have given you that information. Yeah, well, don't you know, just a couple of days later, he was telling us about how he would have to go to Jerusalem and suffer and die. And I told him, no, forbid it, Lord, that that should happen. That's not 
my idea of who you're supposed to be. Hear what he said to me? Get out of my way, Satan. <laughs> me, the rock. He's calling me a source of temptation. He's telling me that I'm in the way of what he was supposed to accomplish. And so that night, we're all sitting, sharing Passover, like I'm told some of you are going to be doing later on tonight. And he looks at us and he says, one of you is going to betray me. And so we all started, oh, no, no, no. It's not me, Lord, no, I would never do that. I leaned over to John and said, hey, you're kind of his favorite. Ask him. And then he looks at me. He says, well, what about you? I said, oh, no, no. Others may fall away from you, Lord, but I never will. I will be there with you to the end. Peter, before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, three times you're going to say you don't know me. To tell you the truth, that kind of ticked me off. Where did he get off saying something like that? In fact, just a little bit later, when they came to arrest him with clubs and torches and soldiers, I'm the one who pulled out a sword. I'll fight for you, Lord. And he tells me, Peter, put up your sword. For those who live by the sword will die by the sword. And they hauled him away. I wanted to speak up. I wanted to say, leave him alone. He's not bothering anybody. But they had swords. And they had armor. Once again, I was afraid. Once again, I took my eyes off him, and they led him away. But I couldn't leave him alone. I had to follow. He might need me. And so I stood outside in the courtyard. It was cold. And I stood by the fire warming myself. And this little serving girl comes up. Now first of all, you got to understand, children don't speak to adults, and women don't speak to men. I was an adult male, and she looks at me and says, weren't you with him? I just wanted to get rid of her. No, it wasn't me, go away. You know, like, well, who's that guy, W.C. Fields, go away kid, you bother me? So I shoot her away. And then somebody else said, well, now wait a second. Your accent. You're from Galilee, just like he was. And I told him, I don't know the man. And then a third person said, nah, you're one of them. I swore like a sailor. Don't know who he is. I'm just here trying to keep warm. And at that moment, cock a doodle doo. He told me, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. And I could see through the windows where they were interrogating him. And he turned and looked at me. He wasn't angry. I wouldn't even say he was disappointed. He knew. He was sad because of what I had done. At first, I was all wet from perspiration. I was nervous. And then I realized that's not sweat, it's tears. For all my braggadocio, for all my boasting, I let him down. When the chips were being counted, I wasn't there. And 
And I went out and spent most of the night crying. You know the story. Your pastor's told it to you. A couple of days later, after he'd been crucified, which I watched from a distance, we get the word from Mary that he's alive. And so John and I, we run on down to the tomb. John's a little faster than I am because he's a lot younger. So he stands outside the tomb. The stone's moved away. I rush right on in. He's gone. And we hear the story. He is risen. The grave could not contain him. Wow. That was awesome. And then one afternoon, we were just sitting around the upper room, and I was bored. I, I'd done the crossword puzzle in the Jerusalem Times. <laughs> I checked the sports scores. <laughs> I'm a fisherman. And so I told the guys, I'm going fishing. And so we went. And there he was. And after we had a little barbecue on the beach, he says, Peter, let's go for a walk. He says, Peter, do you love me more than these? Said, Lord, you know I love you. Do you love me more than these love me? I wasn't quite sure how to take what he was saying. Lord, you know I love you. Peter, are you committed to me? And I said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. The word is restitution. To square things, to make it even. Three times I denied him. Three times he told me, go feed my sheep. In other words, I'm not holding it against you. Go serve me. Now you've all come up short at one time or another. Some of you already are short. Get it? That's a, that's a disciple joke. Some of you have made promises to God that you couldn't keep. You know the promises I'm talking about. It's like when he looked at me. And you know that feeling too. You're driving down the highway, you're singing a tune, you're minding your own business, you look in the rearview mirror, flashing lights. And it ain't Christmas. <laughs> Busted. That's how I felt. That's how you feel sometimes with God. Busted. You know you've not lived the way he wanted you to. can't keep our promises. But thanks be to God, he kept his. And he did for us what we could not do for ourselves. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We worship God with our offering.